there, welcome back to this tutorial video series on creating your own virtual choir videos. This is the second segment in the um, tutorial series and we are just now getting to editing the, um, the audio and really finessing each audio track so that uh, the overall sound is beautiful. So where we left off last time was we had aligned all of the tracks with uh, all of the vocal tracks with where they needed to be um, with regard to the accompaniment track. We faded in and faded out at the ends of those tracks and basically got it ready to be further edited. Before we continue, um, if this series has been helpful to you thus far, please go subscribe to our channel, The Church Musician's Assistant. We uh, release educational and inspirational videos for church musicians um, as often as we can. And uh, if you subscribe and click the bell notification symbol, you will be alerted whenever we release new videos. So it would, uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you would do that, and we hope that you enjoy our future content. Now let's get started with this audio editing. So I've got my piano accompaniment track on solo here, and we're going to go through each vocal track and, and edit it with the accompaniment track, starting here at the top with Bob. So I'm going to unmute Bob. We'll listen to him from the beginning and um, if you didn't see the previous video in this series uh, I actually sang all the parts to this um, for for the purposes of you know completing this tutorial but I gave each vocal part a different name just to help me keep track of it while I edit so this is Bob uh, aka Hannah <laughs> me <laughs> Great God, we sing that mighty hand by which the portents still we stand. Now, uh, this is good so far. However, I should say there are going to be mistakes coming up, and I sang some of the tracks. Uh, as well as I could, and then uh, repeats of the tracks with mistakes thrown in. Uh, that was so that we would have places to edit and, um, you know, different problems basically to address together. All right, so let's keep going. So obviously this little spot needs some attention. We probably don't want to leave that in the mix if we can help it. As long as you know there is somebody else singing this same part and you know they sang this spot correctly, then you can take out as much of this track as you need to. So the spot we need to look at is about right here. And it's fine from this point on, so this whole section we need to uh, do something with. Now, if you want to get rid of it entirely, you can click this button, Silence Audio, and it gets rid of all of it. Remember to fade out and fade back in. Now silence. Cool. So the bad part is gone and hopefully you've got another singer that's covering it. Let's listen to another track. This one is Emily's Soprano. This 
cutoff was a little bit late, so I know that that's not going to line up with everybody else's cutoff. Um, you can zoom in more and really examine that waveform. And you can see right where the cutoff is, okay, right here. What we can do is select it uh, however much you need to select. We can silence the audio if you want to get rid of it entirely and then um, fade out. show you one more track here. I'm going to unmute Hannah. Great God, we sing that mighty hand. Okay, so Hannah, aka Amy, sang this with more vibrato than the other tracks. And, you know, if you get a recording from somebody in your choir, and they have a lot of vibrato, you may or may not want a lot of that texture in your mix. It's, it's up to you. But one way to deal with that is to just sort of press that particular track further back into the mix. So you can go to effect and amplification. Let me do that again. Effect, amplify, and then use this sliding scale to reduce the amplification, however much you feel. You can experiment. All right, so the overall volume now should be uh, much quieter. Great God, we sing okay, here's a section where we could Use that amplification feature. Okay, so that screw up was not egregious. It was just slight, right? Um, this singer, Greg, was slightly late onto the next beat. So what we could do is simply uh, select the area that you want to minimize and go to amplify, bring that volume down. And rather than silen silencing it entirely, you'll just make it quieter. If you zoom in more, that allows you to really be more precise. And we're going to fade out and fade Okay, so that's one way to deal with a problem like that. Now, once you've edited each individual track, vocal track, with the accompaniment track, then you can go back to the beginning and listen to everybody together and sort of get an idea of where you're at with your overall mix. I have not done all of that editing yet, so I'm going to do that. But um, let's just, you know, for the sake of um, our tutorial here, let's go to the beginning and listen through and see where we're at. concern, which is right here. You can see in the waveform the D, the duh, and you can just 
delete, or sorry, not delete, but silence some of those cutoffs. And don't forget to fade out. Um, I'm going to skip that right at this moment, but I'll come back and do it. So, okay. Silence some of those Ds, not all of them. Like I said before, you don't need many consonants for it to convey clearly. Okay, we're going to see if this has helped. Yes, that was a perfect amount of D, just a tiny bit. Once you're done with all the minute editing, check that your uh, check that the end all matches up, right? So uh, in this case, all of the vocalists cut off together, or they should. However, you can see in the waveforms that this singer cut off slightly before this one. So visually, I know that I'm going to have to delete that and fade this person out. And keep doing that throughout to create a cleaner cutoff. And I don't even need to listen to the track to know that this is necessary. Okay, almost done here. And then we will test it out. Yeah, not bad at all. Some things like that you can accomplish just by looking at the waveforms and not even listening. So that's handy. Now I want to think about the overall balance of the tracks. We have our vocal tracks and the accompaniment track. All of these vocal tracks are basically at the same level because I sang them sitting in the same place with, the, with my iPhone at the same distance from me in every single recording. But when you get recordings from your choir members, they will, you know, each one will have a slightly different volume because of the device that they were using and how far they were sitting from it and how loudly they sang and all of that. So um, you may have to tweak each track individually, but since I know that all my vocal tracks are the same, I want to make them a little bit quieter because I feel that the piano track is not um, coming through the mix very well. So I'm going to select all the vocal tracks by holding down control and then clicking over here with the mouse. I'm not selecting the accompaniment track. Okay, then I am going to go to Amplify and reduce that by a little bit and see if we like it. Control all, press Control all to select everything and go to Effect and go to Reverb. With Reverb, you can play around with the room size and how wet or dry the sound is. So I might want to increase the room size from um, the default is 10 here and then 
maybe go up to 20 and see what that does. It's applying the reverb to all the tracks. around with all of these other numbers as well um, to get it exactly the way you want it. Okay, another thing to consider before you export is the overall volume of the, uh, the mixed track. So if you have the volume on your computer all the way up, play your track from the beginning and just see where the volume is overall. If it seems a little bit quiet to you um, with your computer volume all the way up, then you can go to Effect, go to Normalize, and um, press OK there. This is going to increase the volume of all the tracks proportionally. You see how the waveforms got taller and wider. Uh, the only thing to be cautious about with that is clipping. So you'll see when you play it back that um, if there is any red or orange up here, um, <laughs> then you know some of the tracks are clipping, in which case you will get distortion and that's not desirable. Great you can hear that distortion as well, but if you can't hear it, you'll be able to see it up here because you'll see the red and orange popping up. Um, and if that's occurring, then it just means you need to back off of the normalizing. So I'm going to undo that because I think that we're at a pretty good volume overall with this. Remember that the volume you export it at is the volume it will be when you when you upload it to the internet. Okay, so after you've edited all of the parts to your heart's content and you've you know added some reverb if if you like it and you've normalized all that good stuff, we are going to export. Go to File, Export Audio. Give this a name. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna save over this one that I already created. And then you've got your audio track, which we will um, ultimately mix in with our video clips. But uh, the next part of this project will be editing. The video. Let's just go here and make sure uh, everything exported correctly. This should be it. Now in the next segment, we will work on editing the video. So go watch that now. And until then, I'm Hannah Cruz of Church Musicians Assistant. I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.